Hi, I'm Clint with Orchid Dynasty. Today we're in the greenhouse to discuss repotting a Phalaenopsis. It's very simple, there's just a few basic things you need to know and a few common mistakes you want to avoid. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do on this previously flowered Phalaenopsis is take the spike off. We get this question a lot, where should we cut the spike? The spike should be cut where it's convenient at the bottom of the plant without damaging any plant tissue. Another thing of note, we're using a clean sterilized pair of shears that we've used a butane torch to sterilize. Take the flower spike off, we're going to discard that. Save your plant tag, you always want to know what you're growing. Next we're going to take the plant out of the pot, look at the root system. So grabbing the plant by the base of the foliage, especially if you have these rubber pots, you're just going to squeeze and twist, they'll come right off. Next, we're going to look at the potting medium and discard all of the potting medium from inside the roots. This particular orchid is growing in pure sphagnum moss. Most commonly, you're going to encounter sphagnum with Phalaenopsis nowadays. Some growers uh, on the commercial level still do use bark and um, you, will, you will come across that. We're going to take our time completely cleaning out the roots of all the spag. Next we're going to go through the root system and we're going to take our sterilized shears and we're going to cut off either the mushy roots or the dried and brittle roots. We're also going to be looking for uh, leftover root cores which are a thin wiry looking uh, part of the root. What has happened here is that the velamen has died. That's the spongy outer portion of a Phalaenopsis root or, or any orchid root. Um, it works for two functions. It has uh, that spongy quality will help it adhere to, to its host like a tree. These grow up in the canopies of trees. Um, it also, uh, through just simple capillary osmosis, pulls water into the root. So without that velamen, the root is going to die. So we're going to take that off anyway. This is the time to be real honest with yourself. Um, you might feel like you're taking a lot of roots off, but we need to get all of the bad decaying portions out. It's just going to lead to you know bigger and worse problems down the road. Sections that do have a mushy end or tip, we're going to cut them off to clean tissue. Keep in mind, Phalaenopsis roots do fork too, so they, they all have the ability to to rebound pretty good. Now that we've got the root system all cleaned up, we're going to actually discard all of the old potting medium along with those old pieces of root. Never reuse old potting medium. So here I'm going to lay out a new newspaper that we're going to repot on. We have our Phalaenopsis with the root system all cleaned up. Now we're going to choose pot size. Here we have a few pot options. Selecting a pot that is too big is probably the most common mistake we see in repotting orchids. Make sure that the root system can just barely fit into the new pot, allowing enough room for some potting medium. Here are the two different 5 inch pots. Either one of them would fit the root mass just fine, but we want to ask ourselves how do we water, what are our conditions to determine which pot we're going to use. This particular pot, which is our biggest selling pot, has got extra drainage in the bottom. It's got side slits on the sides for extra aeration. This is a clear scotch pot. It's got no side slits and it's got four large holes in the bottom. Both of them have their uses for different applications for sure. So if you tend to have a heavy watering hand or you like to water your plants more often, um, you're growing on a very uh, maybe a damp environment, a humid environment, go with the side slip pot. If you're growing in drier conditions, um, can't get to watering your plants as often, go with a pot like this. Next we're going to go over potting medium. A real common mix that we use here is four parts pine bark to one part perlite or large sponge rock. This is the exact same mix but we've added in one part of horticulture rock wool. This rock wool actually absorbs water and will keep the mix on more of a damp level. 
If you didn't have rock wool and you wanted to obtain the same kind of properties, you could easily use chopped sphagnum moss added back in. The difference between the two mixes is this one will dry out much faster than this one. Knowing that this customer grows on a windowsill and grows her plants well um, and actually waters them very well, we're going to go with the side slit pot with the more water retentive potting medium. As we can see here looking from the top, the plant is in there, the roots are almost touching the sides of this pot. This is what we want it to look like. All these gaps now we're going to fill in with potting medium. Holding the plant with one hand in place in the pot and the pot itself, we're going to take potting medium and just dump it in the pot. Tap the pot, going around the whole entire plant. One benefit of a clear pot is that we can actually look in the sides and see where we've missed potting medium and go back in and fill that in. Tapping, you can push gently, you don't want to crush the potting medium, um, especially any sponge rock or perlite you're using in the, pot, in the mix. Really simple, just like that, it's done.